I am just one thread in a multicolored flag, a flag which represents the United States of America, woven together with so many other threads, threads each of their own uniqueness and distinction, one with their own God, peaceful and just, forming a strength and bond held together with trust and compassion for all, so that their individual goodwill free mind, spirit, and soul will shine the sun on oppression, slavery, and bondage with a beam of light that will always rise up to a higher horizon of hope. For said sake of all of us around our wonderfully beautiful as well as blessed and bountiful emerald of a planet we all call home. 
share this extraordinary creation with a praise of a higher power for giving us all a wondrous world to worship and celebrate faith, hope, peace, and love, giving life a true meaning of joy. The poem piece was written by Scott Schmidt, and those of you who don't know him, he's not back there today, but he's usually at our soundboard, and he wrote that, and Savannah had created that video, and so we're very thankful for those gifts of sharing um, and celebrating our freedom. Welcome to church, friends. What a wonderful day to celebrate and just relax into knowing the Spirit of God in our lives. Pastor Mike is, um, at some point in time, they're worshiping down at Shannondale, and we'll be heading back. They've had a great weekend of mission down in Shannon County, which is the poorest county in Missouri, um, doing some great things um, and wonderful ministry on behalf of St. Paul's and, of course, um, um, for God. So um, just continue to wish them safe travels as they return. Um, on next Saturday at the market, there will be a car show, and that is one of the favorites of everyone is the car show weekend. So no, from 8.30, yes, 8.30 to 12.30, um, the car show will be open. We have a cantina now that you can get bratwurst, hot dogs, um, or wonderful grilled cheese um, from for a cheap price, um, and there will also be a slip and si slide for our kids or adventurous adults, but you might want to bring an extra towel with you uh, to the marketplace this Saturday. Uh, we will be having a concert on Friday night, July 21st. Uh, we will be hosting Teresa Lindell, um, the known as Pinky to those who know her well. And our own Adia Colas will be doing some opening numbers, things that she has written herself. She is um, an amazing young woman who offers special music for us sometimes. So that all begins at 7 o'clock. So join us on the 21st at 7 p.m. And Vacation Bible School, food truck party. Join us in learning about getting our daily bread from God. We um, still, you can register kids uh, pre-K through those just finishing fifth grade. And if you just finished sixth grade or above and would like to volunteer, you can still come see me. Um, would love to have as many here as possible. 9.30 to noon every day this week. Volunteers need to be here by 8.45. Um, so we are going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. And um, just keep us in your prayers this week.
Um, let us be in a time of prayer with one another and with our God. God of mercy and love, we are so thankful on this day that you have come to us, willing to guide us, lead us, walk with us, share in our lives. Because God, life can be confusing, life can be chaotic. Life can be hard and is full of temptations and wrong roads. So God, be with us, lifting each of us up, pointing us in the right direction. Help us to know the lessons of your son, the ways of his life, the sacrifice that shares your love abounding. God, there are so many struggles in this world, so much violence and pain and anger, hatred, hunger. I could go on and on, God, but we just ask for your wisdom to fill the heads of all of those that would make decisions that affect the lives of others, teachers and parents, politicians. God, Walk especially with them. Help them to be open to your ways and your wisdom. We pray for your world, God. As Scott said, such an emerald of a planet that we call home. Help us to keep it alive and well. To have dominion over it. Caring for it. Help us to care for one another, for all of your creation, God, for each and every one of us created in your divine image. Help us to be that reflection in the world. Help us to see ourselves, God, as good enough, as worthy. Help us to know your salvation in our lives. And it will help to make all things whole and all things new. We pray all of this today in the name of your Son who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Not enough. And- 
betray us when darkness seems to win we know the pain reminds this heart that this is not this is not our home it's not What if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your near? What if my greatest disappointment for the aching of this life is a revealing of a greater thirst? This world. life, the pain, the storms, the darkest nights, are your mercies in disguise. So when Shelley built this, she said she had visions of Mike or I or both of us preaching from the food truck. So here we go. Don't want to disappoint Shelley who put so much work into this. In Paul's great fashion, he writes in the seventh chapter of Romans, verses 15 through 25, I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is the sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing." Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is the sin living in me that does it. Clear as mud so far. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I have a good friend. Let's call her D. D was a night owl, and she worked from home on her computer and had very flexible hours. Whenever she had to take her kids somewhere or had a daytime appointment, she took a shot of five-hour energy to help her make it through. Eventually, she realized that she needed more sleep, so she started taking something to help her fall asleep. Then she started taking a little more to stay awake, and then a little more to fall asleep. Next thing she knew, she was double-filling her son's prescription to have something stronger for herself. None of us realized how bad this habit had become until she fainted and had to be admitted. We had, all, we had an intervention, all of us, that loved Dee. It was out of care, truly, and not judgment. She felt like we were making too big of a deal out of nothing. We had another intervention after she was admitted a second time. She cried and said, this isn't me I'm not an addict, but she was. How do we get to a point in our own lives where we don't recognize ourselves? What have I done? How did I get here? This isn't like me. I want to be better than this. I am better than this. Do any of these statements or inquiries sound familiar? 
Sin can paint a pretty picture, but often leaves out the images that become our lives long term. It's just one shot. It's just one piece of pie. I'm only going to sleep with him one more time. It's just candy bars, no big deal. Okay, so let me explain that last one. There was a young man that I had a good relationship with, and he had been arrested multiple times for driving while intoxicated or high. He had lost his license, and he was on probation. This had been a long journey for him and his family and friends. He only had six more months, and he could, he could finally have another chance. He would be out from underneath this thing that he had created. He was trying to reinvent himself, create a different outcome, but that was hard to see while still under the fog of his previous decisions. He had a new girlfriend, and she had two kids. They stopped at a gas station, and he wanted to be the cool new boyfriend. He didn't have the money, so he stole three candy bars, one for her and for each of the kids. They pressed charges, and even though they were just candy bars, because he had priors and was on probation, well, it was a big deal. More fog. I'm really a good guy, he would tell me, and he really was. But he was also an addict that did ignorant things to try to make himself look like he had it all together. But here's the secret. None of us have it all together. It amazes me what I can convince myself of. Who needs someone else? I can do all the damage myself. I deserve this ice cream because I've had a hard day, and I probably do deserve the ice cream. Everyone deserves ice cream. But I have to decide if it is a sin in my life or not and begin to make wiser and godlier choices. I have to start thinking bigger picture and long term. The word sin in the Old Testament is hate. It is an archery term that means to miss the mark. So we are aiming, we hope, for the bullseye, and we often miss. Some of us barely miss, and some of us are way off. Some of us were only off a little, but then we added a little more and a little more, and just a little more, and then all of a sudden we realize that we can't even see the target anymore. How can eating be a sin in my life and not in someone else's? It depends on long-term picture. It depends on how often you allow yourself just this little candy bar. It was just three candy bars. Why does drinking become a sin for some while not for others? Some can drink responsibly and doesn't affect the health of themselves or those around them significantly. And others drink and it overtakes their world, affecting the health of all those around them and, of course, their own life. This isn't who I really am. All of my friends drink too. It can't be more of a sin for me than others, can it? Yes. Sin is a slippery sucker. For some it is food. For some it is shopping. I got it all on sale. For some it is gambling. For others it is alcohol. For others it is seeking affirmation elsewhere, leading to an affair. I truly believe that many, many of us have things we do in life that still confound ourselves. What have I done? Where is the target? There are different reactions to losing the target as well. I'm already lost, you might think, so I might as well keep on just keeping on. There's no hope for me. How did I get here? I don't know how to make this right or find the target again. Or you can take a look at your life, and when you realize you have lost the target, recognize that we all sin. We all are throwing arrows out there constantly and trying to do our best. You can repent, which means doing a 180 in search of the target again. This is hard, but so worth it. You, my friends, can ask for help. Archery instructions, if you must. 
learn from someone who is shooting the same kind of shots that you are, but was able to pull their shots back to front and center. We can get in touch with our God, the teaching and love of Jesus, and begin to listen to the Holy Spirit and take them seriously. I am speaking about nothing new, nothing you don't know about. Yet we continue to violate our own conscience and ignore the Spirit at work in our own lives. I try really hard not to give up on anyone. I know from personal experiences that there is always a full and beautiful divine person hidden by the walls of sins, alcohol or arrogance or so many behaviors. I know that there is a God that loves them at the core, but those people are really two people, who they are created to be and who they are living out. I speak of arrogance because sometimes our sins are because we are self-conscious and begin to protect ourselves through acts of arrogance and false confidence. Sins, things that keep us from heading in the right direction, that keep us from being the one that God created us to be, come in all shapes and sizes. Have you ever heard, if only people really knew who I am? If only people truly understood me, if only people could see the real me inside. Folks, what Paul talks about today is a big deal. The idea of doing what we do not want to do affects each and every one of us, our friends, our loved ones, our neighbors, even across the sea. What would the world look like if we all let our real selves out? Who would we be if we really did what we wanted to do and became who we would love to be? Why do I truly believe in trying to bring about peace on earth here in church and then contribute to road rage even in little ways? Why do I believe that everyone deserves to be treated with respect while here in church, but yell at the woman doing her job at the zoo that had nothing to do with my frustration. I do what I do not want to do. I am who I do not want to be. There is so much good news in this, though. I'm reading a book called The Ruthless, Elimin Excuse me? the Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, How to Stay Emotionally Healthy and Spiritually Alive in the Chaos of the Modern World, by Pastor John Corner. And he beautifully reminded me that lifestyle, that, what, that the lifestyle we are living really does define our life. How do I want to live? Who do I want my life, what do I want my life to look like? I have choices in this, and it's never too late. There is a God that never gives up on you. In fact, God offers us salvation. And that seems so big and mysterious and far away, that word salvation, but it's not. Salvation at its root comes from the same word that means to heal, to be a salve. Salvation is not for the whole and healthy, well it is, but it is intended for all of us that are not healthy and don't have all of it together. Salvation is knowing God in your life, which by the nature of of who God is, brings healing along with it at its core. Luke Lezen once said, Jesus didn't say, come to me all who are crushing it, live in your best life and I will give you rest. He said, come to me all who are weary and I will give you rest. If you're discouraged or tired or weary, don't worry. That's exactly how Jesus expected you to come to him. God is for those of us that have no idea why we just did what we just did and don't like ourselves for doing it. So what I'm saying, the good news, is that God offers salvation to each of us, all of us, because we all need it. Amen. 
Um, there are so many different beautiful ways that we can give here at St. Paul's and so, wonder, so many wonderful ministries. I'd like to share this one with you today. It's the Caring Card Ministry of St. Paul's, and it's been going on for over 23 years. The cards are sent by members of the congregation once a month to our member of our congregation, of which there are 10 confined either in their home or in a nursing home currently. Once a month, each one of the 19 card-carrying participants is given a shut-in's name to send a Thinking of You card in the named shut-in. The participants in the card-carrying ministry are also provided with the names of the shut-ins that are celebrating a birthday that month, so the shut-in is showered with many birthday cards from the people of the church. When one is confined for a period of time, life can be boring and not having access to a computer. One of the things one looks forward to is what the mailman brings each day, besides bills. We are letting the home, we are letting the home and the nursing home bound members know that the members of our church still care about them. We do hear that these cards are greatly appreciated. If you would like to participate in the card carrying ministry, call the church office and tell them that you would like to participate in this ministry. And you uh, will then have the satisfaction that uh, you know you can put, you've put smiles on the faces of our shut in members. Um, let us pray. Spirit of God, when we share from our souls, we open our hearts to your works in this world. When we tend to our neighbors who struggle, we care for the Christ in our midst. When we welcome the prophet who shares your love through their advocacy, we care for the spirit moving throughout our world. When we share with a stranger, we experience divine joy as our reward for giving. Bless all gifts as they build your kingdom here on earth. Amen. When night has fallen, when fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. Yeah, I've decided. Give up on me, you won't give up on me, you love me. 